Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bookor for episode 60 here. I've got a few stories I'll cover for today's episode. Thanks very much for tuning in as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. That's my motto. All right, let me get to the first story. Um, I know I've got a lot of emails from some uh, viewers in Ireland that are saying that EV adoption is not really picking up very rapidly. So this story kind of hopefully will help. It's uh, one of the largest construction companies in Ireland. It's called Sisk and Son or John Sisk and Son, and they just announced plans to invest 2.8 million euro on a fleet of more than 100 EVs for the company's fleet over the next four years. Um, they're really trying to drive efficiencies and obviously EVs do bring efficiencies and lower operating costs and a lot of it's great for fleet applications when you get into EVs. They estimate that switching to EVs over their current diesel um, uh, vehicles will save them 450,000 uh, euro uh, per year uh, again because of fuel costs and then another they're going to invest another 80,000 uh, euro to build fast charging stations <clears throat> at their offices excuse me and construction sites around the area around where they work um, basically they're saying that their energy savings would be particularly large uh, because most of the company's uh, construction company's energy costs are mainly related to what they spend on their vehicles vehicles are a big aspect of their energy overall costs so um, and also the other green benefit it's going to save an estimated 560 tons of co2 emissions by doing this switch so again uh, you know glad to see some more stuff happening in ireland and fleet applications as they've been saying all along, and a lot of people say, are a great way to really make larger impacts uh, on our environment in a positive manner by switching to EVs. On that note for fleet applications, DHL has been moving forward with electrification for quite some time. I believe I reported on that last year. Well, they've just uh, purchased and put into a service their 10,000th, that's 10,000, street scooter. Um, and it's part of their parcel delivery fleet in uh, Europe. Uh, in this case, it's, been in, it's, been, it's going into effect in Cologne, Germany. Um, now, their electric vehicles, uh, all the vehicles that they have deployed, uh, DHL has today, has covered more than 100 million kilometers and saved around 36,000 tons of CO2 per year. That is just huge. Think about that, folks. I mean, just amazing numbers here by these uh, by switching to EVs. Now, this this street scooter van. Um, on top of that, DHL also has twelve thousand e bikes and e trikes uh, to complete uh, their service delivery mechanism in a lot of these urban areas, along with. 13,500 charging points that they've installed. Uh, I'm presuming that these are level two at uh, their depots and delivery bases. Maybe there's a few level three mixed into that. Just an incredible number. So um, if you're not aware, the street scooter work and the work L are produced at plants in um, HN, if I pronounce that right, or Achen, and uh, Duren. I'm going to try that again. Uh, Duren, Duren. There we go, Germany. I'm trying, folks. I'm really trying on my language skills. It's not very good. Uh, and Ford Motor produces the Work XL model at its factory in Cologne, Germany. So that's where they got. Now, uh, these electrification efforts are part of DHL's Go a Green Environmental Protection Program, and they actually plan to produce, uh, plan to reduce all logistics-related emissions by to zero by 2050. So pretty ambitious goal. Again, these things, as I've said, you know, talking about tipping point a few shows ago, they don't happen overnight. It's a very slow and we, we it's a large planet we live on, folks. It's very big. You know, you may see crazy numbers in Norway, but there's a big planet that beyond just Norway. So good to see DHL doing this. It's excellent. Just I love to hear when these kind of stats come out and, and, and the impact that it's making to our environment. Now, a quick update. Uh, I get emails uh, because I'm on the press, you know, media list for a lot of the vendors now, the OEM manufacturers, and I'm on Volkswagen's uh, email list, distribution list, and they sent me an email about a business update, and it's it's just basically saying this is how we did for August 2019 sales. They've had a really, really good month of sales. I just picked out that chart though, and I'm putting it up here on a screen because what stands out to me is the percentage difference in, in a year over year increases for sales for their particular models. And what stands out to me is the e-golf. The e-golf year over year increased 268%, the highest of any of their vehicles. Now, mind you, the number of vehicles uh, at only being 3,000 year to date, over just over 3,000 year to date isn't huge, but that percentage is something that I wanted to focus on. And it just shows that people 
people are looking for really good electric vehicles and the e-golf is a great car uh, it's a great electric vehicle uh, it's going to be replaced of course by the ids when they start rolling out uh, next year at least for north america or the next uh, year and a half um you know on uh, the best other vehicles in their month were the um if i go from top to bottom here was the beetle convertible which was up 71 percent no surprise because it's they've they're done product producing them so there's a big uptake for people wanting to grab these things before they're gone really gone and then you've got your tiguan your atlas or atlas and tiguan and your jetta sedan kind of rounding out their their other top four um, a couple of SUVs in that mix, no surprise, right? It's a hot, hot market. So I just wanted to point this out that, you know, I'm glad this substantiates what Volkswagen's direction is, right? They're talking about going all in electrification. And when you see these kind of numbers, when you see these uptakes on their on their, on their their cars, and this is a North American, this is a U.S., uh, I believe this is a U.S. sales number, um, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot. And they're, they're doing well with the E-Up and the E-Golf in Europe, of course, still. But, you know, they're seeing the, the switch. They're seeing this uptake, these year-over-year -year massive increases in EV adoption. And they know that that's the writing on the wall, and that's the direction they have to go. So keep the faith with VW, all right? Don't be slamming them. They are making steps in the right direction. Quick update from Hyundai on the uh, Ionic Electric. The 2020 model year uh, is going to have some refresh tweaks to it. It's got a little bit, I think, different body style, just some tweaks that. Um, and it's going to be... Um, rated at now about 311 kilometers range or 193 miles. This is WLTP, so you can take a little bit off for that, maybe around 270, 280 for EPA range, I'm guessing. Um, and that's about 6% more than the last, uh, than actually their specs that they or originally came out that they would uh, increase it to. Now this is increased to um, a 38.3 a kilowatt hour battery pack uh, that's a net offering which replaces the 28 kilowatt hour battery pack now we've seen reviews on the ionic even with the 28 it's a really really efficient car and does quite well uh, even with uh, against some vehicles uh you know like the leaf i mean i know that there's been fast charging vehicles you know bjorn doing thousand mile craziness kind of routines which is again the small the very very small percentage of people are going to tax their evs like bjorn is doing so you know i would take what he does it's good to understand that, but I would, again, look at real-life applications and the massive amounts of millions and millions of people that don't drive a 1,000 kilometers in two days uh, or a 1,000 miles in, in a day and a half or two days. That's not realistic as far as an everyday practice. So it's great to see the Ionic uh, increase uh, some of the improvements. Um, they've uh, upped the kilo the power rating for the electric motor to 100 kilowatts instead of 88. They've got a seven, they've upped the onboard charger to 7.2 kilowatts instead of 6.6. .6. They've increased one, they've uh, added a one pedal driving mode, I guess, so certain, uh, similar to the uh, e-pedal uh, e from uh, Nissan, revamped interior, exterior, and all that kind of stuff. So you can go online, look at all the other specs, but I'm just it's great to see that Hyundai is continuing to invest in their EV infrastructure and EV offerings. Ionic's a great car. Uh, I see a lot of them around the road. I probably see more plug-in hybrids than I do full electrics, to be honest with you, but it's great to see anything with a plug. Talk, I've been talking about the Porsche Taycan over the last few shows. Well, it was finally officially launched now, as opposed to unofficially leaked. Um, so it took a, you know about three or four years to get from Mission E concept into the Taycan production, which, uh, which has been announced, which is great. Um, so I won't go through all the stuff because I've talked a lot about it, but I wanted to highlight that they're offering two models of the Taycan, the Turbo and the Turbo S, which is kind of ironic because there's no engine in this. So I guess the Turbo comes from increased power offering to the motors to give you that boost, that almost ludicrous type of speed. I guess that's what their their comeback for ludicrous is. Um, so in these two models, now they're not going to be cheap. They're starting at about 150,000 plus euro for the uh, Turbo and the Turbo S at 185,000 euro. That equates to something along the lines of 180,000 US and uh, about 215,000 US if I remember reading those numbers correctly. So not going to be cheap. And in Canada, uh, add 20% to that, those numbers. So, uh, you know, stand, start standing in line now. The battery has a capacity of about 93.4 kilowatts each. They're dual motor machines, all wheel drive, of course. Um, with permanently uh, excited, as they call it. I love German, you know, I love these these announcements here. Excited synchronous motors uh, mounted on the front and rear axle. Now, the output for the S achieves about 460 kilowatts, uh, and they have something called an overboost mode, which will give you 560 kilowatts for a short time, giving you a 0 to 100 neck snapping time of 2.8 seconds. 
Wow, so it's just crazy, and seven seconds to get to 200 kilometers. I mean, oh my goodness, that's, I don't know where you're going to, uh, other than the Autobahn, there's not really other places you're going to use that, except the drag strip. The Turbo S has a range of about 412 kilometers in WLTP, so shave a bit off for EPA, and the slightly weaker Turbo, turbo uh, has uh, 460 uh, watts of output as well, but slightly less overboost at 500 kilowatts of power, reaches up to 450 kilometers of range, uh, again, WLTP. Maximum charging capacity, so that's kind of the big thing for the Taycan here is their charging capacities. They can pull 270 kilowatts uh, of charging. And what that means is you can go from 5 to 80% in just over 22 minutes. Uh, so think about that. You can get down pretty low on that battery and boost it up to 80% in just about 20, 20 minutes or so with the right charger, of course. Uh, that's almost game changing. Um, I mean, that's pushing, you know, supercharger version two or version three, whatever it is, that's putting out crazy, crazy numbers. And the ultra fast chargers are going to be coming out at 350 and stuff like that. If the, if the vehicles can take it, that's that. Now you're starting to really get into mainstream into uh, really knocking down that barrier of EV adoption that a lot of folks have about waiting around for charging. If you can get it down to 15, 20 minutes, around that or even less 10 to 15 minutes that's a game changer uh, uh, just a hell of a machine um and you know if somebody uh, has got one on a reservation uh, again they're launched they're taking reservations i believe deliveries are going to be starting at the end of this year probably in europe and, and other but check porsche website for all that somebody's got one on order let me know what your order processing is like and what kind of etas you're seeing my last segment today i'm going to fly through uh some new EV models that are anticipated to come out next year for 2020. You've heard me say ever since day one and when I was working back with Trevor on the Model 3 Owners Club show, we were saying that 2020 is going to be this magical unicorn year. Um, and I say that in very positive manner, not in a negative way, that a lot of things are happening. It's almost a transitional shift in the EV landscape. And, and what we meant by that was that a lot more choice and models are coming out. Almost the floodgates start opening from various manufacturers, not just Tesla, not just Nissan, not just Chevy, whatever, you know, a lot of the people are getting into the game. And you're seeing that now as a report on multiple different cars almost each and every week and vehicles coming from all kinds of manufacturers, even startups. So it's great to see. So here's a list of, of uh, not top, but of the 14 or so cars, um, new models that are coming out for next year. And let me get and fly through this, get right into it. First one that's highly anticipated, of course, is the Tesla Model Y. It should be coming out in this. It was revealed this spring. It should be coming out sometime in 2020. When they say 2020 in Tesla, I think Q4 next year. So don't hold your breath. It's going to be earlier. But who knows? You know, it's, uh, I believe, based on the Model 3 platform. So they've got that down pat. So it may not take a long, uh, a lot longer than that. It's really a small SUV or almost crossover type of vehicle. Uh, you can expect similar similar specs to you're seeing in the Model 3 with a price to around 60k US to start uh, with a short range may be anticipated around the 40k 40 to 45 these are US numbers um, we won't know they're revealing uh, we won't know until you know uh, Tesla says more and of course their timelines can change but Model Y heavily anticipated next one for that's coming out for 2020 as being a breakthrough year for EVs is the Volkswagen ID3 which I've talked about a ton of course starting in Europe uh, that hatchback, five-door hatchback, there may be some sort of flavor that'll come to North America later on, but that's not confirmed. Um, <clears throat> no confirmed specs on that because it's uh, going to be released uh, this month, I believe, at uh, one of the auto shows coming up. Um, but, you know, you, there's lots of stuff and I've talked about it, so uh, you're full aware of a lot of the specs. If not, you can Google it and find it out. Of course, Rivian talked about them a lot. They're heavily uh, a lot of there's already a big lineup for those guys for both their R1T truck and I believe the SUV. They're going to both be, be manufacturing both of those in quantities next year. Um, and uh, I just can't go a couple of days without seeing some Rivian photos on uh, Inside EVs at least website and others. They just keep twe tweaking their marketing. They're not nothing really, uh, ex you know. Uh, really industry defining they just keep doing new paint jobs and new settings and stuff like that just to keep the marketing buzz going but good on them they've got a smart team uh you know 800 up to 800 horsepower uh using 175 motors per wheel so four wheel drive independent motors cool concept you've seen the tank steer thing that i talked about a few shows ago heavily heavily people are dying for this thing uh i you know again it's a game changer and it's waking up the other manufacturers like the gm uh, fords and maybe chrysler's i'm gonna i'm gonna hold off on fca right now 
but to look at shifting their electrification plans into the pickup truck SUV environment more heavily. And, and I've reported on that. Another breakthrough vehicle, the BMW iX3. Just talked about that in the last show, so I won't go into a lot of details, but heavily anticipated. Great, great size. Ton of them out there. Uh, good specs on that. I think it's going to do very well for BMW um, if it's priced very you know competitively in the marketplace if they don't go crazy on this thing now i haven't talked about biton very much because they're a they're a, kind of a more of a niche manufacturer but the m byte is something that is heavily anticipated for that'll be coming out next year it's a it's a well-funded chinese ev startup so they're doing all right um they do have plans to sell this in the u.s so that's kind of why i'm talking about it it may make it into canada or some of our other geographies i don't know yet on that um, but they're anticipating their first vehicle, the M-Byte, here to come out in the fall of next year. Rear-wheel drive SUV, kind of around the size of an X5 from BMW, 45000 or so US, which is a great price point if they can pull it in. 250-mile EPA range, 250-horsepower version, 95-kilowatt-hour battery pack, so on and so on. So... Uh, the, the, we've only seen concept. We haven't seen full production or, or pre-production renderings yet or vehicles, but I'm sure that'll be coming out soon. Keeping on this fast pace, the Mercedes EQC talked a lot about that. It's officially been launched already, so now we're just waiting for deliveries to really start happening. They were supposed to happen this year, and they still may happen this year. Uh, so this may not fall into the 2020 year because, you know, it has already been launched. People are reserving it, putting money down. Uh, but just there have been delays in getting these things out, and it, they may not be able, Mercedes may not be able to squeeze some de uh, deliveries in for this year. I don't know. I do anticipate that they will. Uh, so this may be a little ahead of the 2020 curve, but certainly certainly an anticipated vehicle of great Mercedes build quality and, and the you know, rest of that story is self-explanatory. I've talked a lot about the Polestar 2, uh, you know, the, the old Volvo company. Polestar is now their own legit company. As I mentioned on the last show, Polestar 2 uh, should be seeing that uh, real live here in, in Ontario when they come doing their Toronto cross-country tour, uh, hopefully later this month. Won't get into specs. Uh, they're going to sell a limited number of their Polestar 1s, which I talked about, but the Polestar 2 is really the one that's getting people excited between 45 and 65, 40 and 65,000 US price point for well equipped machines. So be on the lookout for Polestar 2s coming out next year. Continuing on the Volvo track, the XC40 All Electric. I know that Volvo has some versions of the XC, uh, the XC family that are plug in hybrids, uh, but they're coming out with a full electric version of, of their more uh, compact model, the XC40, which is a great. Uh, um, great starting point, I think that you know that smaller SUV is a great space for it, um, and they um, it's in 2020. Um, I don't have any other specs other than they're guessing 250 miles of EPA with a price tag under 50k US. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, Ford Mustang inspired SUV. We've seen some renderings, we've seen some uh, you know anticipations. Nothing really leaked much from Ford, but some sort of SUV that kind of looks like a fat Mustang. Really, <laughs> I don't know, Mustang on steroids, something like that. Um, whatever we'll have to wait and see but that's supposed to be coming out in 2020 300 mile is what ford is claiming epa uh, again not much else other than uh you know it's going to join ford's going to use this vehicle to launch uh, another 15 or so electrified vehicles over the next few years into the 2020 decade uh, into the 2020 decade time period so we'll wait and see how that turns out and the Honda Urban EV, which I've talked about um, already and did a video on, uh, did a show uh, talking about that. Go check out Fully Charge if you want to see more on that. They did a great, great ride around. 150-mile uh, range. Uh, I saw just saw an article that the Honda may be looking to tweak that range a little higher. So that's good news for that. But, uh, you know, I think they're getting a good... Uh, getting good feedback on the Honda Urban. Uh, again, it's you know quality is there. It's just a matter of price point versus range. It's a little high for the range, but again, for most applications, as I've talked about before, it's going to be plenty fine, and it's a great looking car with a solid build quality. Um, and again, uh, going back to Volkswagen, the ID Cross talked about that. That's going to be their their first ID slated for North American uh, deliveries. Uh, kind of like a compact SUV crossover vehicle, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, similar, similar in size to the Tiguan, I believe. Uh, and you can go on and get all the specs, 83 kilowatt, but up to, uh, no, an 83 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, 220 miles EPA range, so forth, so forth. Uh, but that's an exciting vehicle that should be hitting North American uh, market late 2020 is my understanding. I don't think it'll be early next year. It's going to definitely going to be the later year. Um, and the e-tron, of course, uh, is already out for the, for the 55 uh, Quattro uh, version of the e-tron, but there's going to be a smaller, um, 
uh, e-tron based uh, SUV, a little bit smaller platform. Uh, they think they're going to they're going to borrow a platform that they already use on one of their smaller SUVs to become the third e-tron model. Of course, the GT sedan was the first one, but a very small niche car focused. Um, <clears throat> And uh, of course, the e-tron that's that's selling and that's you know that people are driving today is is the current one. This will be a smaller one, um, more affordable, you know, more high volume, you know, type of vehicle. They want to really kind of kick the numbers on this. Hopefully, it'll be higher than about 220 miles because I know that Audis Audis are getting slammed for uh, you know efficiencies on that. But I've already talked about my opinion, so I won't go through it again. Might stay with a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. We'll have to wait and see. The, uh, if you got money to spend, of course, if you and if you don't want to get by a, a, tech, a Tesla or a Porsche, then you can look at Austin Martin with the Rapid E. Beautiful car. I saw one fully charged live. A gorgeous car. Um, they'll build only 155 of these next year, but this you know equivalent of 602 horsepower, all electric, uh, four door. Uh, first units in the coming out of Wales, England, and uh, in 2020, they don't say when, but I'm guessing second half, let's say, um, 65 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, 700 pound feet of torque, uh, just crazy numbers. Apparently, they've sold all these pre-units, these units already. That's good for them. Fisker Emotion, yeah, Fisker's still hanging in there. They're doing all right. Um, they keep kind of in and out of the news a bit, but um, the Emotion is still something on, that's targeted for 2020 release. 775 horsepower, 140 kilowatt hour battery pack. These are big numbers. 400 mile range, EPA range, US numbers. Uh, as big, uh, more legroom than a BMW 7 Series, and that's if you've never been in a 7 Series, it's a big car. You. Can, you can have a nice comfy sleep in that vehicle i'll tell you that um so sometime in 2020 we'll we'll see um you know it just depends if they can uh, keep their funding going so those are what we expect at least for now to be coming out in 2020 it's definitely going to be an exciting year so stay tuned for no more announcements keep checking out the web and as i see more news i will talk about it all right and that's it for this edition of the ev revolution show episode 60 educating minds one tail pipe at a time is my motto thank you very much for watching want to remind you again about fully charged live austin texas february 1st and 2nd weekend in 2020 next year i will be there i'm confirming everything now with the fully charged folks so i will definitely be there looking forward to that i've already got some emails from viewers that say they bought some tickets so using my discount code if you want to save 15 percent on fully charged live tickets use code ev revolution and it is case sensitive as it is on the screen here so please follow the case sensitivity and put it in correctly to save 15 percent off the ticket prices for fully charged live if anybody's coming i hopefully uh please sincerely ask you that you find me to say hi so i can get a picture with you and and listen to your ev story I understand what's important to you and thank you very much for watching and of course um i'm, I'm very uh excited about everybody that continues to comment and be interactive on youtube uh, in the comment section and uh, liking the shows uh, it's always inspiring to see feedback and I appreciate that if you got something to say on there please do just keep it civil that's all I ask <clears throat> Also, again, humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. Um, uh, you know, I, again, it's a big motivator for me to continue doing what I'm doing by getting Patreon. Um, I do have expenses that occur in put, producing this show and, and travel and all kinds of things that I have to deal with in putting this together and a lot of time. So I, your, your financial support is greatly appreciated. If you're not sure what that is, go check out my Patreon website here. And uh, even a dollar a month will help. If you want to do a little more, that'd be great. If you want to do a PayPal donation, like a one-time PayPal, send me an email my email is coming up at the end of the show under the contact information and i will give you my coordinates to uh, send to that you can do paypal if you want so i've had a few of those uh, and thank you very much for that and i guess that's it for wrapping up the show um you know thank you very much for watching Please, everybody, stay safe. And I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the U.S. election campaign. It's only about a, still over a year away, but I've been following a lot of the candidates. And, you know, I watched some of the Climate Town Hall last week. Wasn't that impressed, to be honest with you. There were, there were some, a lot of speak about EVs here and there. Um, you know, think about that, folks, for my American viewers when you're going to the polls next year. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Continue to follow those stories. And until my next show, please, everybody, stay safe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.